I'm going to show you how to write an implementation of Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm in VB.net. If you research this, you'll see that there's dozens of ways you can do this. But I'm going to stick fairly closely to the algorithm which I described previously. I've already written a graph class which provides a way of loading up an adjacency matrix. My adjacency matrix is itself just a two-dimensional array. My approach to the shortest path problem will be to write a Dijkstra class whose constructor takes an adjacency matrix as a parameter. I'll also have a parameter for the total number of vertices in the graph. If your adjacency matrix array is only as big as it needs to be, you can get the number of vertices from the upper bounds of the 2D array. So your Dijkstra class's constructor would only need one parameter, the matrix. I could write my shortest path code as a method of the graph class, but by writing a separate Dijkstra class like this, I can focus more easily on the algorithm. Perhaps later, I'll make this functionality a method of the graph class instead. Anyway, now I need some one-dimensional array variables to hold the path information that the algorithm will generate. I'm using a list object instead of an array to keep track of the unvisited vertices. It's easy to remove an item from this, and when I do it will shrink accordingly. It works like a dynamic array, only more convenient, as you'll see soon. It's a list of integers because my code will refer to each vertex by a number. Inside my constructor, I'll dimension these arrays according to the information the constructor is passed. Now I need a loop to initialize the paths. My list object, unvisited vertices, will contain sequential numbers from 0 to whatever, representing each vertex. And each value in A shortest distances will be infinity. Notice how I did this. And finally, my start vertex will have a distance of 0, which is how far away it is from itself. Now, most of the work of generating the shortest path information will be done by this constructor. When you instantiate a Dijkstra object from this class, these arrays will be populated with the path information ready for consumption. So I'm going to continue writing code here. My algorithm will repeat while there are vertices that remain unvisited. I like to comment as I go. Notice the convenient count property of my list object. OK, so first I'm going to pick up the next vertex. This is a good point to move some of the processing into another routine. The greedy part of this algorithm is to select the unvisited vertex nearest to the start. So let's turn our attention to a routine that will do just that. I need a couple of variables. One, to hold the smallest known distance, which will be infinite to begin with, and one to hold an identifier of the vertex with that distance. Now, I'll scan through the unvisited vertices only and compare each of their distances with the shortest one I know. If I find a smaller one, I'll record it, and of course the vertex it belongs to. By the time this loop finishes, I'll have the smallest known distance and the vertex it belongs to. All I need to do now is remove this vertex from the list of unvisited vertexes and return it to the caller. So, back up in the constructor, I now have the current vertex. 
Now I'm going to scan the adjacency matrix looking for its neighbours. And for each neighbour, I'm going to calculate its distance from the start. And if this is smaller than the distance we already know, I'll use the new value. So let's check to see if the current vertex has an edge with another. Let's give myself a bit more space here as well, I think. Now this may take a while to visualise. I current vertex stays the same for each iteration of the for loop, and I varies. This means I'm scanning down a column of the adjacency matrix. As I do so, I look for non-zero values, which would indicate edges with other vertices. So if I find an edge, it's with vertex I. And here comes the crucial part. I've taken the distance between the current vertex and its neighbour, this bit here, and I've added it to the shortest known distance to the current vertex, here. And I'm asking if the shortest known distance to this neighbour is bigger than what I've calculated, then I can replace the shortest known distance with this new value. Now this is fiddly, even if you understand the algorithm well, so take some time to ensure that you understand what we're doing here. OK, so moving on, now I can update my previous vertex array. And that is pretty much it. I'm just going to add a couple of read-only properties to my Dijkstra class in order to return the arrays with my path information. And then I'm done. Let's get these in the right place. Okay, these are both returning arrays of doubles. Let's get that right. So there it is. We're ready to test it. To test my program, I'll instantiate a graph object first. This loads up an adjacency matrix for the simple graph that I described previously. I've also placed a button and a list box on the form. I'll write the shortest path information into this list box. Here's the code I've already written for the button. I've instantiated a new object from the Dijkstra class and called it path information. And remember, the constructor generates the path information as soon as I create a new object from the class. I'm passing the constructor the adjacency matrix of my graph. This is just a 2D array and I'm also passing it the number of vertices. Then I'm loading up a couple of 1D arrays with the shortest distances and the paths. Finally, this loop writes the information into a text box. By the way, if I wanted to get the shortest path from a different starting vertex to every other vertex in the graph, all I need to do is change which vertex has an initial starting distance of zero. So I could consider making this a parameter of the constructor as well. Anyway, let's see what happens. I make my graph. And there's the shortest path information, ready to do with as I wish.